Introduction to Solutions in Aqueous Reactions, Individual Ion Concentrations. In this tutorial, we will be looking at how to determine the concentration of individual ions in a solution, mixing solutions composed of the same soluble solute compounds but different concentrations, and mixing solutions composed of different soluble solute compounds and different concentrations and doing a whole bunch of worked examples. Determining the concentration of individual ions in a solution. When an ionic compound dissolves, the relative concentration, in other words, the molarity, of the ions introduced into the solution depends on the chemical formula of the solute compound. So what we're looking to do here is calculate the concentrations, again, we're looking for the molarity, of each of the ions in the following solutions. And what I'd like to point out with the examples that we're looking at is that they're all very soluble compounds. They're all going to fully dissociate. So the first one that we're going to look at is Na3PO4 that has an overall concentration of 0.25 molar. What I want to do is say, if we took this compound and we dissolved it in water, what would the total concentration of just the sodium ions be? Now, in order to do this, we have to recognize that there's a subscript of three down by the Na. So I'm going to say, all right, there's three moles of Na. So that's what the three is going to be there. And I'm going to multiply that by the total concentration associated with the entire compound, which is 0.25 molar. So to work out just the concentration of the sodium ions, we would do three times 0.25 molar to give us a total concentration of 0.75 molar Na plus one. Now let's look at the phosphate ion. When we look at the phosphate ion, we notice that this is in a ratio of three to one. So for the phosphate, there's only one mole of phosphate ion. So one times the overall concentration is 0.25 molar. So one times 0.25 will obviously give us 0.25 molar for the concentration associated with the phosphate ion. Let's look at another example. Here I have the compound Al2SO4-3 that has an overall concentration of 0.15 molar. So again, I'm going to look at just the concentration of the aluminum ion. I notice the subscript of two. So that means we're going to have two moles of aluminum ions times 0.15 molar is equal to 0.30 molar. Now let's look at the concentration of the sulfate ion. Here we see that we have a subscript of three outside of our parentheses. So we're going to have three times the original concentration of 0.15 molar. So if we do three times 0.15, we get an overall concentration of 0.45 molar for our concentration of our sulfate ion. And again, this is the overall concentration for our aluminum ion if this compound was dissolved in water. Let's look at our last example. We have Na2CO3 with an overall concentration of 0.87. So if I just wanted to identify the concentration of the Na plus one, we look at the subscript by the Na. So that means two moles of sodium ions with our original concentration of 0.87 molar. There, I stuck the molar in. And so it's going to be two times 0.87, which is going to give us 1.7 molar for our concentration of Na plus one. And then we look at the CO3 and we notice here that the ratio of sodium ions to carbonate ions is two to one. 
So we're going to put our 1 in, and we're going to multiply that times 0.87 molar. So the concentration of just our carbonate ions, if this was all dissolved in water, would be 0.87 molar for CO3 minus 2. So that's a very introductory way of looking at individual ion concentrations when dissolved in water. Now let's talk about what happens if we mix together solutions composed of the same soluble solute compounds, but different concentrations, so different molarities. So again, you think molarity, you think moles over liters, uh, a lot going to be going on in this one. So we're going to determine the concentration, so again, the molarity of each ion present in the solution formed by mixing. Now we're going to mix together. So you got to imagine two beakers here. And in one beaker, we're going to have 32 milliliters of point of of 0 0.260 molar HCl, so hydrochloric acid because we're assuming this is aqueous, and a different beaker with 24 milliliters of 1.2 molar HCl. So we want to see how the concentration changes as we mix these two containers together and what our final molarity will be for our hydrochloric acid. So again, we're always going to be thinking about our molarity formula. So molarity is equal to moles over liters. And we really need to keep this in mind because if we think about this, what we're really focusing on is the number of moles. Because if you have molarity in liters, you can find moles by cross multiplying. So in this case, I have a volume and I have a molarity, so I can find moles, and I have a volume, and I have a molarity, so again, I can find moles. And that is going to prove important as we set this up and for future problems. So the way that I'm going to approach this is that I'm also going to recognize this hydrochloric acid. So it's a strong acid, it's fully going to dissociate. So I'm going to take my first molarity, okay, so 0 0.260 molar. And I'm also going to recognize that this could be the molarity for H plus one, or it could be the molarity for Cl minus one, because again, they're gonna fully dissociate. I'm gonna take that molarity for my first one and multiply it times the volume. So again, I can find moles, and I'm gonna turn my milliliters into liters. So it's going to be 0.03 two liters, okay? So that's for this example right there, that part of my situation, my scenario. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add that to the other beaker. So in the other beaker, I have a molarity of 1.2 molar, and I'm going to multiply that one times the 24 milliliters, which I'm going to turn into liters to get 0.0 two, four liters. Now, I know this is going to sound redundant, but I'm going to point this out a couple of times as I do this. Molarity times liters will give me moles. So I'm going to get moles over here. And then molarity times liters is going to give me moles. Now on the bottom of this whole ratio that I'm setting up here, I am going to put in the total volume. So I'm going to make a little note to myself, and I want you to write this in your notes, total volume of both beakers, because we use the volumes at the top to figure out the moles. So we have 32 milliliters and 24 milliliters, which adds up to 56 milliliters. So I'm going to turn that into liters, so 0.056 liters. So if I use this part to calculate moles and this part to calculate moles, I'm going to have moles over total liters. And if I have that, I will find my new concentration of both of these together. So if I work this all out and I multiply this together, plus I multiply this together and divide it by the volume, I am going to get a new concentration of point 
six, six molar. Okay. Or again, we can always represent this as 0.66 moles over liters. And because it's HCl and it's a strong acid, that means I'm going to have 0.66 molar H plus one, and I'm going to have 0.66 molar of Cl minus one. Because one more time, it's a strong acid, it's gonna fully dissociate, the number will be same for both of them. Let's do another example. Okay, so this situation is going to be a little different. In this example, we're gonna be mixing solutions composed of different soluble solute compounds and different concentrations. So our compounds are going to be different. Specifically, we're going to be looking at lithium sulfate and cesium bromide. Okay, this is going to be similar yet different to what we have done in the past, to what we did in the previous slide. So one of the things that I'm going to put up here as a little cheat is, again, we remember our molarity formula. So we always want to write that molarity is equal to moles over liter. And the other thing that I'm going to put up here is to figure out this new molarity when we're looking at these individual ions. We're going to take the molarity of our given. We're going to take the volume that's associated with our initial molarity. And then we're also going to look at subscripts. So when you go back, that says subscripts. I'm sure you can figure that out. That says subscripts, great. And then we're gonna put total volume on the bottom because it's not like it was with HCl where we were like, oh yeah, it's gonna be fine. It's gonna dissociate. The compounds are the same in the two beakers. We're just mixing them together. Now it's going to be different. And again, we have very soluble compounds. So I'm going to start out with Li plus one. Let's look at Li plus one. We're just gonna look at the concentration of that with our little brackets around it. It's all good. So here's the Li, right? And the molarity associated with this is 0 0.450 molar. The volume, because again, I'm the same thing as the previous slide, I'm gonna take volume times molarity to get moles that are associated with this. So 0 0.450 molar, I'm going to multiply that by the volume that's given with it. So I'm going to change it from milliliters to liters. So it's going to be 0 0.036 liters. Now, I am going to notice that the ratio of lithium ions to sulfate ions here is two to one. So I need that too, because if you remember the very beginning of the notes, when we were thinking about what's the total concentration of an ion in solution, we were just multiplying concentration times the subscript. Now we're taking even more into consideration. So we can't lose this little two right here. So that says there's gonna be two moles of lithium ions in this total solution. So I have my molarity, I have my volume, I have the subscript, and then I'm going to take the total volume of what it would be when I mix both of these beakers together, the 36 milliliters and the 30 milliliters. So my number on the bottom for all of this is going to be 0 0.066 liters. So when I work this out, I'm going to have 0 0.450 times 0 0.036 times two divided by 0 0.066 liters, and that will work out to 0 0.491 molar of lithium ions. So that's just the lithium ions in solution. Let's do another example. We did the lithium, now let's do the sulfate. So I'll put the sulfate over here. SO4 minus two, we're finding the concentration of that. And I'm gonna do the exact same setup. So the molarity that's associated with the sulfate is 0 0.450 molar. I'm going to multiply that times the volume. So 0 0.036 liters. 
Now, when we look at the ratio of ions here, it's two to one. So there's only one mole of sulfate ions associated with this compound. And again, I'm going to divide this whole thing by 0 0.066 liters. So when I multiply and divide all those numbers together, and I get the concentration for just the sulfate ion, it's going to be 0 0.2 four, five molar of sulfate ions, SO4 minus two. So that takes care of our first two ions, the Li plus one and the SO4 minus two. Let's see how that changes when we go over to the cesium bromide. So now we're going over to the cesium bromide. So I'm just going to look at my cesium ions to start with. So CS plus one and just, I'm going to set this up just like the other ones. So I'm gonna start out with the molarity, which is 0 0.250 molar. I'm going to multiply that times the volume associated with it in liters. So 0 0.03 liters. I'm going to look at the ratio between the cesium and the bromine. And again, I noticed that it is one to one. So there's only one mole of cesium ions in solution. And just like the other two previous examples, I am going to divide this all by 0 0.066 liters, which is my total volume. And when I work that out and do all my calculations correctly, I am going to get 0 0.114 molar of my CS plus one ions. Now, what is it for the bromine ions? Well, the bromine ions are going to be the exact same setup with the exact same answer. And you might say, well, Dr. English, why can't I write that it's the exact same answer? Well, I guess you can, but you better make it a really strong answer with a, a complete statement, a complete sentence with correct punctuation explaining why the two things are the same in vast detail, or you can just do the calculation for me, showing me the work, but in some way or form, you need to show me that you understand what you are doing and why they are the same setup. So we can either do it again or give me a complete sentence with correct spelling and punctuation to show me that you are aware of what is going on. But in the end, because they're one-to-one, -one, uh, we are going to have the same concentration values for both the CS plus one and the BR minus one. So what did you learn? We talked about how to determine the concentration of individual ions in a solution. We looked at mixing solutions composed of the same soluble solute compounds but different concentrations. Then we looked at a situation where we mix together solutions composed of different soluble solute compounds at different concentrations as well. And in the process, we went through a bunch of worked examples. Need more help? Feel free to contact me. Have a great day.